In this lesson, we will continue working with inverse trig functions. Um, now it'll be composite inverse trig functions. Also, you can rewrite an inverse trig function uh, as an algebraic expression. So we talked about this before, um, but we have to be careful because we can't just always cancel inverse sine and sine and copy whatever is there. And that is because if we look at 3 pi over 4, if we evaluate sine of 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 1, 2, 3, there's a 45, 45, and this is 1, 1 radical 2. Um, the sine is, the sine of this, here we have negative 1, 1, radical 2. Uh, sine is y over r. So if we evaluate this, which is 1 over radical 2, then we have to do inverse sine of 1 over radical 2 like we did in the previous lesson. And so that means find an angle that has this sine ratio, which is y over r. y is positive, so we could have these two angles. Um, but inverse sine only has answers here. So that's why we would have to say that theta is pi over 4. We can't say that inverse that this expression is 3 pi over 4. It's not 3 pi over 4 because of this restriction. The answer has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So here we'll say it's pi over 4. And if you just look at evaluate what's inside and then just start over with a new problem, I think that's a good strategy to use. Oh, we don't have to do that. Let's do this. So, um, turns out this problem is you're allowed just to do this, cancel this, and the answer is negative one fourth. But um, you have to know when the shortcut works. Shortcuts get you in trouble if you don't know why they work. So let's not use it. And let's just look at doing this. Well, that says find the angle that gives you that. This is y over r. We want the y value to be negative and the r is 4. Uh, negative y values occur here. Um, we know that um, inverse sine can only have angles here, values here. So that means we're looking at this. Um, so there would be the theta. And then we have to do sine of this. Well, if this is um, r is 4, we don't know x, but we know that y is negative 1. And if that is theta, and we now are going to do sine of theta, this is represented by theta, which has 
these values. We want to do y over r, y over r. And so we get back to the original value. And try that one. Pause the video. So find the angle that has a cosine of one half. Cosine is x over r. X is positive, so the angles would be over here. But inverse cosine can only have values from 0 to pi. So we know we're dealing with that one. That's theta, radius, x. And then it wants the cosine of theta. Cosine is going to be x over r. So there we see it again. Um, we're allowed to just cancel that, and we'll get 1 half. So let's evaluate that. Tangent of pi over 2 pi over 2 is here with a x value of 0, y value of 1, with a radius of 1. Tangent is um, y over x, y over x, so that's undefined. This is undefined, so we're not going to be able to do arc tangent. So there we have to be careful that we don't just cancel these and say the answer is pi over 2. Pause the video and try that one. Seven pi over two is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's seven pi over two. The x value is zero, the y value is negative one. R is one. Sine is y over r, y over r. So that's going to be 1, negative 1. Then we're going to do arc sine of negative 1. So that means find an angle that has a value, a sine of negative 1, y over r, and what angle has a y value of negative 1 and a radius of 1? The y value of negative 1, radius of 1 is going to be 3 pi over 2. Okay, 3 pi over 2. I was going to say 3 pi over 2, but that's wrong because we can only have angles between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So it can't be 3 pi over 2. It has to be negative pi over 2. We just keep following the same uh, strategy, evaluate what's inside, and then do what's outside. Sine of pi over 3. So we want to find out where pi over 3 is, 2 pi over 6. So if that's 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, that's pi over 3. So we have that triangle, 1, 2, radical 3. 
and the sine is y over r, y over r. Sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. And now we start a new problem. Cos inverse cosine of negative of radical 3 over 2 means find an angle that has that cosine. So that's x over r. And we are looking for positive x values. That means we could be here or here, positive x values. Um, but inverse cosine can only have values up here, so we're going to not use that one. Uh, the radius is 2, the x is radical 3, so the y must be a 1, 1, 2, radical 3. And that means theta is pi over 6 because it's opposite of the 1. That makes that the 30 degree angle or pi over 6. All right, keep working the same strategy. We're going to evaluate the inside and then evaluate the outside. Arctan means find an angle that has a tangent of 5 over 12, and the tangent is y over x. The y value is 5, uh, x value is 12. That could occur here. But it could also occur here at negative negative, and that would be over there. But arctangent can only have values from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that means we are going to keep this angle. We're not going to use that one. Then we're going to do sine of theta. Sine is. Um, y over r, and we just have to find r with the Pythagorean theorem. So y over r. Okay, so those problems are when we have a value, now let's look at what happens when we have a variable. We can write it as an algebraic expression. So let's talk about what that means. That's cosine of theta is x. But let's make that a fraction and label it with uh, x over r. But since we already have an x, let's not call it an x. Let's call it the adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent is x and the hypotenuse is 1, we need to find the opposite. So this is going to be y, and we could do the Pythagorean theorem. So it'll be x squared plus y squared equals 1. x squared plus y squared equals 1. y squared is 1 minus x squared, so y is radical 1 minus x squared. 
we know that that's going to be radical 1 minus x squared. Now we go back to this, sine of theta. Well, here's theta. Theta. Sine of theta is uh, opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite is this. The hypotenuse is 1. So we've represented inverse trig an inverse trig expression as an algebraic expression. Okay, pause the video and try this one. Find the angle that has a sine of x, uh, sine and value of x. Make it a fraction. Label it opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is x, the hypotenuse is 1, and we need to find that missing side. So let's call that a this time, because that's already an x. So it'll be a squared plus x squared equals 1. a equals 1 minus x squared, square root. So we want a by itself. We're going to subtract x squared and then square root. So we know that this is radical, 1 minus x squared. Now let's do cotangent of theta. Cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite. The adjacent is this. The opposite is that. So we, we rewrote the inverse trig expression as an algebraic expression. Pause the video and try this one. So we want to find uh, theta that would have a sine ratio of 1. And let's make it a fraction. Label it with opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is x, hypotenuse is 1. And we'll do the Pythagorean theorem for the adjacent, which will be x squared minus 1, 1 minus x squared, like we saw in the previous problems. So now we want secant of theta. And secant is going to be radius, or hypotenuse, over adjacent. Hypotenuse over adjacent. Then we could rationalize that, rationalize the denominator, and we would have that. One more. Pause the video and try that one. Sine of theta equals x. Make it a fraction. Label it for, for sine, opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is x, hypotenuse is 1. And we'll have 1 minus x squared, square root. For the adjacent, we we'll do cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse.
and we'll stop there.